Hey everybody, this is Doug with another video for my fellow device patients. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic. We're going to talk about seat belts. Now some people talk about how the seat belt lays across their device and that is uncomfortable and others worry about how a seat belt might damage our devices if we are in a car accident. We're going to talk about both of those topics. But please remember, I'm not a medical professional. I'm just some guy on the internet. And I'd like you to do some research. First of all, talk to your doctor if you have problems with a seat belt and also look at your local uh, uh, transportation websites because in most areas of, of the United States and in parts of the world, it is illegal to not wear a seatbelt and it is illegal to wear your seatbelt incorrectly. So we'll talk about those things and I hope this video is helpful to you. Thanks. Let's talk about seatbelts. So the two biggest complaints I've heard is one is that the seatbelt lays on top of your device and that hurts. And the second is that there's a fear of what will happen when we're in a car accident with the seatbelt you know, really pulling hard on our device. So the first thing to understand is that our seatbelts have evolved from the old days. Remember back, uh, back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, we used to have just lap belts. And that was two points of contact, one by the door and one where you connect the seatbelt into the buckle. Uh, what we found though, the, the research showed is that in an accident, your body goes forward and you hit the dash, you hit the steering column, and that's no good. So our seatbelts have been redesigned to a three point restraint system. We have one point up here, one by the buckle and one by the door, so that when we're in a car accident, our seatbelt stops us in a fairly upright position, prevents us from going into the steering column or into the dash. One of the solutions that I've seen online, first of all, is to not wear a seatbelt, and that's a horrible idea. The second is to take your seatbelt and put it under your arm. This is equally as bad an idea because you have removed one of the points of restraint. You've basically turned this into a lap belt. So when we're in an accident, this part of the seatbelt will actually slide down. It will cut into your body, possibly breaking ribs, but then your body will go forward into the steering column, into the dashboard. It's completely ineffective. Also, in most parts of the US and in the world, it's illegal to use your seatbelt under your arm like that. Even with a doctor's order, it's illegal to do that. It's re recommended uh, by the medical device companies that you leave your seatbelt as it is. So, what can we do to prevent the pain that we see up here? There's a couple of suggestions. First of all, there's a couple of products on the market. You can look online for uh, something called a seatbelt pad, and that's a, kind of a pad that goes across the, uh, the seatbelt. You Velcro it on, it's like a sheepskin or something to that effect. It adds a little more buffer to it, and that might be comfortable enough. Also, there's a product out there called Soft Touch, uh, and there's various products like that one that you can find online. It's actually designed for pacemaker patients and defibrillator patients. Um, this is a, a product that um, wraps around your, your seatbelt and goes uh, kind of over your device, and it adds a, um, padding around your device so that it's not actually touching your device anymore. Um, so that's another product you can use. But if you're looking for a quick home remedy, here's an idea for you. You can take a regular hand towel <clears throat> and you fold it into thirds so it looks like this okay then you take the ends and you fold them in twice so it looks like that now that in the middle is where your device is going to go and you're going to put this on your seatbelt around your device it'll look kind of like this like that now Plenty of room under here and where the, the seatbelt is not rubbing against your device anymore because, if you can see it, these points right here have added a little bit of padding and it holds the seatbelt away from your body. Now, what will this do in an accident? Well, this is a lot like wearing a winter coat in Minnesota. Uh, it's just extra padding. You're still keeping your three points of contact for the seatbelt and this will take a little bit of pressure off this part right here where your device is so that when if you have an accident, it will put the pressure more on the other sides, uh, the opposite sides of the device rather than on the device itself. So this is one way that you can kind of do a little home remedy, um, a little do-it-yourself uh, seatbelt pad that will work uh, in a pinch, or you can look at the uh, products online and, and see if one of those meets your needs. One last point. One of the biggest concerns is the damage that might occur to our device and leads if we're in a car accident and our seatbelt is directly on top or nearby our device. The truth of the matter is that our devices are made of titanium. They can take quite a beating and the leads are very durable too. And if we're in an accident that's powerful enough to damage our device and our leads, then really device and lead damage is going to be the least of our concerns. We're more concerned at this point about preventing death and serious injury. So it's the better idea and it's the recommendation of the medical device companies that we wear our seatbelts as intended. 
Um, that will prevent serious injury or death and any damage that occurs to the system after that, we can deal with that after that. So I hope that this information is helpful. Again, I encourage you to talk to your doctors and do a little bit of research, uh, but let's stay safe out there, guys. Thanks.